to have the legendary Kenny Rogers here with us tonight. We've talked about your history and amazing list of accomplishments, those that we could fit in. Let's take a moment and talk about what you might consider to be your highlight reel. Looking back, what Whoa. moments stand out? Um, I, I, I think recording with Dolly is one of them and with Lionel is another. And then when I used to host the CMAs, I don't remember much about it, but I loved it. And and I was with Dottie West at the time. Right. And it meant so much to her. She and I won an award a couple of years. And um, I've never been one that make winning that important. Because if you do, losing is much more painful. Oh. So I just kind of go with whatever the crowds. That's good. That's really good. Now, you've achieved a level of fame that most of us could never even fathom. If most of us were kind of sitting back and thinking of, if I could do everything I wanted to in a lifetime, I don't even think they'd be able to come up with your life. <laughs> How do you stay grounded when you reach that level? You know, I think it kind of slips up on you. You, you get successful, and then you get more successful and more successful. And I think success breeds success. You know, there's only two ways you can compete in the music business. One is you do what everybody else is doing and you do it better. And I don't like my chances of doing that or you do something different and you don't invite comparison. And that's kind of where I chose to go. If you go back and look at my songs, The Greatest, Coward of the County, all, they were different from anybody else that anyone else was doing. Absolutely, even Lucille, the song Lucille, it really broke through for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been extremely lucky uh, finding hit songs when the time came. And it hurts me when we're apart And you're not here by my side there is nothing in this world for me I guess I'm crazy Crazy for you, can't you see? And although you may think I'm crazy This is where I'll always be I will always Thank you. 
watching this uh, show and Vince Gill was on with Sting and he said, tell me something, would you like to have another hit record? And Sting said, I don't think I have the energy. And that's kind of how I feel. I don't have the energy to go out and promote it properly. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy where I am. I've done much more than I ever thought I would and much more than I deserve. And it's been a great life and you can't get greedy. Can't get greedy. And you know, your fans love you so much. It has to take courage to decide I am going to retire. It has to be hard. It can't be an easy decision. Well, we talked about it with the management and I said, you know, I would hate to not do a farewell tour and then die yeah. and not having done that. So um, we're milking it for everything it's worth. Now. <laughs> no, it's, it's fun though. It, it's a nice tone and I get a chance to go through a lot of my older hits that I haven't done. And I have Linda Davis out with me and she is wonderful. She has all the energy. I have a chair that swivels and I turn south and I turn north and she walks in front of me. Is there anything that you want to do that you haven't done that maybe retirement will allow for? No. I mean, I've really done everything I wanted to do. I've accomplished much more than I should have, much more than I ever thought I would. And so you, know, you can't get greedy. You have to sit back and say, it's someone else's turn. Because I think I took someone else's place when I came through. She wakes up smiling every morning Like an angel of the light She makes me wonder, am I dreaming? Why is everything so right? I've been living in a world so dark Till she started filling up my heart With a little more love With a little more love With a little more love We are different She is peaceful I get all bent out and I go crazy whenever I want to. She's still good for goodness sake. There are days I want to run and hide. She replaces every tear I cry with a little more love. And now people, it's turn, their turn to take my place. And I give it up gladly. I don't know if it's possible this day and age when everything is so diluted, you have so many options for music this, this time, you know, at this internet age. I wonder if it's even possible for anyone to ever reach the level of stardom that you did. Well, I know this, it, the business is different. Yeah. You used to do concerts to promote your albums. Now you do albums to promote your concerts because everything is downloaded. Yeah. And they used to, the people used to have to buy 10 songs on an album to get the one they wanted. Now they just download the one they want. And, and I think it helped in a lot of different ways. The audience got to know the artist better. They listened to all the songs and said, wow, he's doing some cool things. This is really good. I want to know more about him. And I think the download is very sterile. I mean, I, I'm not begrudging it. I think it's where the business is. And I think a lot of us knew it was going to go there. But, you know, I, I, like I said, I was lucky. I had my run at success. I've enjoyed every bit of it, and I'm ready to retire. Somewhere is holding on to a bottle and pouring one more and hoping that God will get them to the doll. Ed, you did have a gospel album not too long ago that you released. What has faith meant to you in your life and has it changed as now you're coming to the end of your career? Well, I, th I think that my mom was very religious and, and my dad wasn't really religious, but my mom was. So she made us go to church three times a week and I said, 
Do we have to go three times a week? And she said, son, you can never be anything more as an adult than what's put into you as a child. You are going to church. And she took me three times a week, and we all did. And I think that I became a better person because of that, as did my brothers and sisters. So, you know, you can't come. You just have to be thankful that you have a good life with good parents who love you, that do the right things. And then you have to try to do that with your kids. When you listen to some of the lyrics in The Gambler, you were never a gambler, which I found to be very interesting. Never. I learned early on. I can lose. I can't win enough to excite me, but I can lose enough to depress me. So I stayed away from that. <laughs> but it's really it's a song that really talks about life. You really do need to know when to hold them, when to fold yeah. them, when to walk away, and when to run. Well, Don Schlitz, who wrote that, told me it was not written about gambling. He said it was written about life, wow. about how to handle your life and to put things in perspective. What would you say to your fans? who are maybe a little bit disappointed about the fact that you're retiring, what would you say? I mean, they can still get your music. It's easily accessible, and um, they're still going to have opportunities to see Kenny Rogers. You're not going to just fade away into the woodworks. We know that. <laughs> no. I thought I was. <laughs> no. You know, I, it's, I will tell you all, thank you so much for 60 years support. You know, and uh, I don't take that for granted. And I appreciate every one of you. And I've tried to repay you in ways that I can. And uh, I thank you. I thank each and every one of you. OK. And then what kind of a legacy do you want to leave behind for your twins? Well, my goal is to teach them right from wrong. You know, and, you know, they, they started doing some stuff on the internet and I said, guys, if you have nothing else in your life, you must have a conscience. You must be able to say, this is wrong, that's wrong, I'm not gonna do that anymore. And if you can teach them that, then I think you're ahead of the game because this is a different world than I was raised in. Yeah. And, and they seem to want to do the right thing and that's all you can ask. Well, Kenny, this is definitely going to go down as one of the most memorable hours of my life. I really appreciate you joining us. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Kenny. Coming from Rural America's Most Important Network, I'm Christina Loren. Good night. You said I need you. Then you changed the words and added harmony. And you sang the song you had written for me to someone new. Nobody sings a love song quite like you do Nobody else could make me sing along Nobody else could make me feel The things you write when I know they're wrong Nobody sings a love song quite like you So sing a song, sweet music man Travel the world with a six-piece band that does for you what you ask them to. And you're trying to stay young, but the songs you've sung to so many people have all begun to come back on you. So sing your song, sad music man. You're making your living doing one night stands They're through with you They don't need you You're still a hell of a singer but a broken man But you'll keep on looking for one last fan to sing to Nobody sings a love song quite like you do Nobody else could make me sing along Nobody else could make me feel Things are right when they're wrong with a song Nobody sings a love song quite like you So sing a song, sweet music man
I believe in 